Hello, and welcome to an AppScript crash course. I'm Eric Kalita. And today, we're going to be talking about cursor and selection within Google Docs and how to manipulate and read it via AppScript. Uh, we recently published a blog post that goes into uh, the launch of this feature, as well as some really good samples that show how it works. Um, and today, I'm just going to give you a little background into how cursor and selection operates, show you uh, a little bit of debugging information, and then also we'll code together some examples that use cursor and selection. Um, so before you can really understand cursor and selection, it's important to understand the structure of a Google Doc as it exists with an app script, because you'll be using that information a lot when coding against the cursor and selection APIs. So a great resource for this is within our documentation. We have a page called Extending Google Docs that talks about a bunch of different technology you can use in App Script to extend a Google document. And there's a whole section on the structure of a document. And in addition to some, some uh, description, we have a nice tree that basically outlines what elements can exist within a Google Doc and what their hierarchy is like. So if you've never programmed against our Document App API before, uh, do read up a little bit on this structure, and then refer to it as you're coding, uh, as it's very helpful to kind of understand how different elements work together. Um, another great tool that I'm going to show you a little bit first is called Cursor Inspector. So this is a demo uh, that was linked to in the blog post. And it allows you to kind of explore the raw data that comes back in the Cursor and Selection APIs without actually having to do a lot of coding yourself. Um, so let's see how this, this sample works. So you can make a copy of this document from the blog post. And when you do, you'll get a menu that says Inspector. Click Show Sidebar to bring up the Cursor Inspector sidebar. And now what this does is it's a page that live loads data from the Cursor in Selection and shows you just a raw kind of dump about what you're getting back. So at the very start of my document is where my cursor is currently. And you'll see that my cursor is within a paragraph element. And it's at offset 0. Uh, and the surrounding text is the whole word of that header, cursor inspector. And I'm within 0 within that text. So let's talk a little bit about what offsets mean. Uh, when you're in the element type other than text, so something like a paragraph, a table cell, a list item, those are what we kind of call container elements. And they're elements that themselves are kind of buckets that hold things. They can hold text. They can hold inline images, drawings, a variety of different types of content. So when your cursor is being reported as within one of those types, like paragraph here, the offset means which element within the bucket is your cursor in front of. So right now, my cursor is in front of the zero width or first element within the paragraph. In this case, there's only one element within the paragraph, and it's a text. Now, if I were to move my cursor one to the right in between the C and the U, you'll see that the element type switches to text, and the offset is now one. So now the, t the meaning changes slightly. When you're within a text, the offset means what character index within the string of the text is your cursor in front of. So in this case now, it's in front of uh, the first or character, index 1, the u, within the text cursor inspector. And when I get to the end of the text, you'll sw see that it once again switches back to the paragraph. And now the offset is 1, meaning I'm at, um, I'm at the end of all of the things within my paragraph. I am at the, there's now, uh, within, the, within the outer paragraph, I am right before the child at index 1, which doesn't exist yet, which makes it very easy to add a new child to this paragraph. So you can use this cursor inspector yourself to play around and see how cursor and selection change. And let's see what happens with selection now. So selection, I can very simply start by just selecting some text, like let's say this URS. You'll see what I get is one selected element. Uh, it's a partial selection, because I only have part of that text element selected. And then it gives me the indices within it that have been selected. You'll see I have no cursor when a selection is active. At any time, you have either a cursor or a selection, but not both. Now, if I were to select this entire paragraph here, uh, all the way from start to end, you'll see that the element in my selection changes from a text to a paragraph. And it's not partial. I'm selecting the entire paragraph. And the start and end are negative 1, which indicate you know, no valid data, don't use them. But the thing about selections, unlike a cursor, is that they can contain many elements at once. So I can, for instance, select all of these list items. And you'll see that they all appear here within my selection. Um, and so you, when you're working with selection, be aware that there could be many things selected at once. All right. So now that we understand the basics of cursor and selection, let's actually do a little coding. So I've created a script 
attached to this doc. So I'll go to Tools, Script Editor, and select my script, Cursor Fun, because we're about to have some cursor fun. So let's create a new function that does insert hello world. This is what we're going to do first, just kind of demonstrate how you can use Cursor API to insert some text wherever the cursor is located. This is useful when you want to, let's say, import some information into a document wherever the user has their cursor. So the first thing I need to do is get a hold of the cursor. So the cursor uh, is within the document. And so we'll use document app. We'll get the active document, which is the one we currently have open. And then we'll get the cursor. Um, now, like I said, a cursor may not always exist. For instance, if there's a selection, there's going to be no cursor. So we do want to test first if there actually is a cursor available for us to work with. And if there is, it's very easy for us to insert some text at that cursor using insert text. So I'll insert hello world. And that's it. We're done. So let's position my cursor somewhere. Looks like I had an old hello world here from a previous run. Let's delete that. So our cursor is right here in that first paragraph. And we'll run insert hello world. Now, I already authorized this script, but if you haven't, you might need to authorize it. And just a simple clicking of accept. We go back to the document, and we'll see there's hello world inserted in the document right where the cursor was. Um, like I said, now, obviously, I could have just pasted the word hello world. Uh, but when you were developing a script, it could be very useful to paste all sorts of automatically generated content. So that's working with cursor. Now let's code up a little bit of selection. So let's say I wanted to take all the selected text uh, within a selection and bold it. Right? So you can only bold text. You can't bold images. So we need to add a little bit of logic that removes things that can't be bolded. And then we also need to do, add a little logic that handles partial selections. Right? So if I select part of a text element, I don't want to bold the entire thing. I just want to bold the part that has been selected. So let's write that function. So I'll create a new function here called uh, bold me. And much like before, I need to get a hold of the selection object. So in this case, uh, it's still within the active document. Ooh, typos galore. Uh, and within there is get selection. Now once again, we do want to test to see if there is a selection, because there might not always be if there's a cursor. Uh, and now what we need to do is pull out a list of all of the selected elements, so all of the elements that have been selected, basically what those rows in the table were before. So I'll do var selected elements uh, is selection dot get selected elements. Now we want to loop over these, so we'll do a simple for loop. Great. And. Uh, now we need to pull out the element that is in within that selection. So a selected element is kind of a wrapper around a uh, an element, and so you can see a selected element has the element itself, uh, whether or not it's been partially selected, and then the start and end offset within that if it is partially selected. So I'm going to pull out the actual element that has been selected and do a test on it. So we need to know can this element be treated as text. That means, is it a paragraph? Is it a text? Is it a list item? If it can be treated as text, then we can bold it. Otherwise, we can't. So what I can do is do a test where if the element dot edit as text. So it doesn't autocomplete because it's not in the outer element class. But basically, if the element that we have a hold of right now has this method available, then we know we can treat it as text. And if this method isn't available, then we know we can't. So now that we know it can be edited as text, we can actually grab the text. So I'll do element.edit as text. So there's our text. Now, we're ready to bold this text, but we need to know, do we bold the whole thing or just part of it? And so for that, we once again need to do a test on that is partial. So if the selected element is only partially selected, we'll do one thing. Otherwise, we'll do another. Uh, now, it, it, the, if it's not partially selected, it's actually quite easy. We can just do text dot uh, set uh, bold, and we're done. Now, uh, if it's partially selected, we have to only bold some of it. So what we can do here is set bold, and you can refer to the documentation as to the parameters. Uh, but the parameters are going to be the start, the end, and then whether or not to make it bold. Uh, and actually, this takes a true to make it bold as well. So the start is going to be 
the get start offset. The end is going to be get end offset. And then we want to make it bold, so we'll put the word true here. All right, so just an overview. We grabbed the selection. We made sure it was there. We got all the elements. For all the elements that can be treated as text, we got them as text. And then if it's partial, we only bolded part of it. And if it's not, we bolded the whole thing. So let me save my code and run the bold me function. So let me select some text here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the first kittens, the two pictures of kittens, as well as part of the last word of kittens. And now if we turn back on cursor selector, you'll see we have some text, some images, and some more text. If we run the bold me function, and I go back to my document, you'll see that the first part, the fir whole first word kittens got bolded. The images were left alone. They can't be bolded. And then I only bolded this, the second word of kittens up until the selection. So this is a little bit of an overview about how cursor and selection works. But there's a lot more that you can try out and learn yourself. Like I mentioned, we did publish a blog post. And the URL is uh, going to be shown below. Uh, go check it out. We have some more information on how to use cursor and selection, some great samples to try out, and links to our reference documentation that give you kind of all the detail you need to know about how to use cursor and selection. Thank you for joining me, and have a good one.